In the last video, I showed you a complete circuit of a 12 volt battery, a light bulb that we decided was one kilo ohm, and I showed you what would happen if we hooked that up, how much current would be drawn from the battery. And um, one of the things that I had mentioned in the first video on electricity was that I wanted you to be comfortable using the meter. So we're going to look at metering the different aspects of this circuit. So we already looked at metering the 12 volt battery in the first video. We would set our um, meter to DC voltage, which was that setting, right? And then just put one lead on each terminal. Um, let's say we want to meter the resistance of the light bulb. So we're going to set our meter to the little symbol of an ohm, which I should learn what Greek symbol that is. Um, our leads are going to be the same as for resistance because like we talked about before, both of the voltage and resistance symbols are here on this red. So black is always uncommon. Our red is going to be on that terminal. And we'll, I, I didn't show any terminals on this light bulb, but um, assuming that there, you know, there's going to be a place to hook it up. This is a type that would screw into a socket, so maybe it's not the best example. But imagine there's two terminals on this light bulb, and we're just going to meter there. On a light bulb that screws in, usually the side, the metal, um, I'm drawing a blank on what the term is, but the, the threads on the side would be one conductor, and then there's a little bulb on the bottom, which would be the second conductor. So we'd actually probably draw our line to there, but whatever. So we're going to set it to resistance. Um, and there's something I want to discuss about what happens when your meter is set to resistance. I mentioned before that we should always check or that I always check the voltage of a circuit before I check resistance if I don't know what's on it. In this case it's a light bulb that we can all clearly see is not hooked up so we're not worried about it. But let's imagine it's just a pair of wires that you removed off a panel or you're in a junction box or something and you're not a hundred percent sure what's on it. I would always meter um, for voltage first just to make sure that there's no voltage on it. And the reason is, in this case, our first meter here is set to resistance, right? Let's say we take another meter, like I just pasted into uh, onto the screen. I'm going to take the leads from this new meter and put them on the other meter. But I'm going to set the meter to meter DC voltage. So we're going to be, oh, that's the wrong color. So we're on DC voltage on meter on the left. If we were to meter that, so this meter on the right is set for resistance, right? If we were to meter this, the meter leads of the meter set for resistance, we're going to detect some voltage coming off of that first meter. So the point here, I'm, I know I'm kind of stumbling, the point I'm trying to make is when you set a meter to read resistance, it puts voltage onto the circuit from the battery that's inside of there. So it's not much. Um, I could have looked this up or done an experiment before I started making this, but going off memory, it's about two volts or two and a half volts, three volts, something like that. But it's not a good idea to mix voltage sources. So before you start metering for resistance on a circuit, you're going to want to make sure there's no voltage on it. So I'll usually set it to AC voltage, put my leads on the circuit. If I have nothing, set it to DC voltage, put the leads on there. If I have nothing, now I'm happy, I'll, I'll meter for resistance. So um, if you make the mistake of metering for resistance and you put your leads on a circuit that has voltage, you're usually going to get a negative symbol, um, like a negative... A lot of times it'll say, uh, my colors are messed up here. A lot of times it'll say negative OL, um, but you might get a different reading than that. But that's usually a giveaway that there's some voltage on your circuit. So let's say you get negative OL on your meter. 
I would pull the leads off right away. I've never damaged a circuit by making that mistake, but in theory it could happen. Um, you know, you're not supposed to put, you don't want to hook a battery up to another voltage source. It just causes problems. So, anyway, just metering the light bulb, we decided it was a 1 kilo ohm light bulb, so we can expect about 1K to show up on our meter. And again, a K, 1K, is 1,000 ohms. <clears throat> now, let's say instead of metering the resistance, we want to meter current. And this is where you have to be a little bit more careful. When you, when you meter current, you have to insert your meter into the circuit. You have to make it part of the circuit. Whereas in every other case, we're just kind of T-tapping the circuit. You know, you'd take your black and red lead and just go to the black and red terminals of a battery or go to the black and red terminals of a fire panel, you know, whatever. In this case, you actually have to insert your meter as part of the circuit. And you have to be careful um, because your two meter leads, once you set them for resistance, essentially become one continuous wire. So if you were to go across the battery, um, that would be similar to our first example with that guy that we just handed a bare copper wire and put them across the battery. You're going to short out that battery. Now the, the meter has a fuse in it, so that fuse will blow, but then you have to go find another fuse. So you really have to be careful, not even so much when you're metering the current, it's when you're done. I always move my leads back to the setup for voltage or resistance so that I don't forget next time I go to use my meter. You really have to be careful with that. So, um, okay, let's draw. I tried to move around the toolbar. I, I didn't like the quality of the videos in the past, um, the way they looked. It's just not even close to HD, and I was trying to figure out why, and I think it's because my screen was too small, so then when you enlarge it, so I went with a bigger screen, but now my toolbar's funky, so that's one of the reasons I'm fumbling a little bit more than usual. Um, anyway, so we're going to draw, let's just draw the positive right to the light bulb, but then we're going to take our positive lead from our meter, and we're going to go to this 10 amp setting. If you remember when I when I was discussing the difference between DC voltage and DC millivolts, I said you would always start with DC voltage and then work your way down to millivolts um, if you don't know what to expect on that circuit. I also told you I never use millivolts. Well, in the same case, you would start with the 10 amp setting here and then work your way down to the 400 milliamp setting. But just like I never use the millivolts, um, I'm not sure I've ever really used the milliamps. I mean, you can, but if you have it set on the 10 amp setting, basically this is telling you not to exceed 10 amps. So if you're not sure whether or not a circuit's drawing more than 10 amps, don't use this meter. You'd need a you know a meter with a higher rating. Um, but for my purposes, this 10 amp setting has always been sufficient. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take one lead to this light bulb. And then the other lead is going to go from the common, because remember that always stays in common, to the battery. But before we connected that, we would have put our meter on this current setting, the A with the squiggly above it. Now when you turn one of these meters on and you set it to this A with the squiggly line, um, that's AC current that you're metering. To change it to DC, you'd have to hit the yellow button at the top right, and your meter would give you a little symbol that, that tells you that it's now on DC. So we know this is a DC circuit because our power source is a DC battery. So we, we, we changed our meter lead. Um, we changed our setting on our meter to amps, then press the button for DC amps, and we can expect, because we said this was a 1 kilo ohm resistor, effectively, and a 12 volt battery, we did our calculation where the 12 volts divided by 1,000 ohms gave us 0 0.012 amps. So we would expect to see something like that in this setting. In my experience, 
nobody that I've encountered is nervous metering voltage and resistance, but people get nervous metering amps at least at first, or metering current at least at first. Um, I, I, I find that to be sort of a bottleneck in people advancing because there's a, there's a lot of times that there are odd problems that, that are solved by figuring out that some circuit is being overdrawn. So I do think you should be a little nervous metering current, but only because you have to remember that your circuit, I mean that your meter is now basically one short wire. So if I were to take another meter like I did before and meter the, um, let's say I disconnect the leads from the battery. I'll do this real quick. This isn't going to go well. But let's say I disconnect this, right? And instead of metering the battery, I'm going to take meter leads from my other meter here. Now I'm going to set this to resistance. I'm going to go black to black, although the color doesn't matter. Red to red. And I'm going to set it to resistance. I'm going to get a dead short across these two leads. So I'll, I'll expect to see 0, 0.000 like we talked about before. Because all this essentially is, is one continuous wire. So I'll say it one more time. It's important once you're done metering current, I would take it, remove the positive lead from that connector and put it back over here where it's safe and it's harder to do any damage.